you are now about to see what is the beginning of a decent sized project. Uh, I have a new seller client, which has given me a condo here in the city in Washington, DC, and it's located in a building that was built in 1922, so 100 years ago. And this condo has not been updated in a very long time. It is certainly worn down, okay? Uh, the kitchen and the bathroom were updated some years ago, but they were updated in a light fashion, nothing crazy. Uh, with that being said, the rest of the, the, the home here, the condo, needs it, it needs to be refinished. So these clients are on a budget and we will have to watch how much we're spending. But essentially what I'm going to do here is show you how I'm going to implement everything in this condo. And eventually when we get to the final product, which shouldn't be too far away, I will uh, show it all together. So this video I'm filming today, I think it's the 26th. I don't know what today is, October 26th. I'm not gonna show anyone this video until this whole project is finished, and then I'll show it all together. So let's run through this. Uh, there, I'm not going to do anything within this condo that I haven't already shared or talked about on the YouTube channel. So you'll get to see actually how you can implement all those techniques and make something, you know, which you would never expect to be stylish, look stylish. The goal for this condo is going to be a sophisticated, modern, slightly, lux slightly luxurious element to it. That's the look that we're shooting for here. And uh, I think we can do that while staying on a, a moderately sized budget. So if this is something that you're aiming to do with your place, I'm gonna show you how you can do it. Let's flip this thing around. I'll show you what this place looks like right now. Okay, so here's the front door leading into the condo. The first thing you have is a coat closet on your right. The kitchen's gonna be over there. And this is the entryway. Okay, the kitchen we're not going to be doing a lot with. Why? Because the kitchen can turn into a big ticket item. If we start replacing all of the cabinetry, the granite and whatnot to fit, you know, a whole scheme, it's going, it's going to take us over budget of what these clients want to spend. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to make some small adjustments to the kitchen. We might change out the, uh, the backsplash or, or change the color of it at least. And then up here with the trim and whatnot, we're going to brighten this up, put a, you know, a high gloss white on it, tear out all this old wallpaper. Uh, up here, we're certainly going to clean all this up, take out this lighting fixture, make this all look nice. So essentially all we're doing in the kitchen is making it pop a little bit more as opposed to doing a complete overhaul. Flooring, mm, possibly. We'll see if the budget allows it, but we may switch this out for the flooring that we're already going to do through the rest of the property. So think of the kitchen as someone that already has a nice outfit on, but they haven't brushed their teeth yet. We're gonna, we're gonna brush this kitchen's teeth before they head out for the day. This flooring, this flooring is very old, okay? If I were to guess, Again, the building's built in 1922. I don't think that this floor can be any younger than 65 years old. It has to be at least that age or older. If this is original, I mean, that's crazy, but um, it is certainly old. This is the main living area. So all of this is getting repainted. This is really a great fireplace, a traditional, fireplace, uh, which you would have found again, a hundred years ago. And they can look really nice. We just need to make it pop a little bit more. So that's going to be the goal with that. The built-in book bookshelves, those are awesome. They just need to be cleaned up. Old lights, uh, who knows when these were replaced? Probably, I don't know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago, something like that. But we're going to go ahead and get rid of these, they're sitting on both sides. So we're gonna put something nice there that matches the rest of uh, the, you know, the look, the look in entirety that we're going for. This is coming out. We're gonna get a nice staple piece, a nice um, uh, focal piece that we can stick here. I'm thinking about a, a gold chandelier, probably with spherical designs on it uh, that will transform this whole room actually. It'll transform the vibe just by having this piece here. This wall, I've talked about this, when you have a huge white plain wall, um, 
and there's nothing to do with it, you know, you try to do some shadow boxes or molding or, or something of some nature. So what we're going to do is combine two elements here. We're going to do not only an accent wall, which is changing this into a color. The rest of the home is going to be uh, painted a flat white because we want a real clean look in here. We're going to take this and the goal, what I'm aiming to do is to do like a forest olive green on this. And we're going to have box molding, which goes throughout this whole wall. So it would look good either way with just the color or just the molding, but we're going to do both and really try to make this back wall pop so that when you walk in to the condo, your eyes immediately go, oh, wow, that's cool. Oh, wow, that is cool. So we're going to bounce these off of each other. The dark, uh, you know, olive green is going to pair very well with a gold chandelier that we put over here. This is all going to get repainted, you know, make, make it look better. It, it is a nice fireplace. I love these traditional fireplaces. We just need to clean that up. So as we roll over here, I'm thinking about doing something over here in the entryway. It will be last if I do it, uh, but essentially it would just make it more interesting. I'm thinking about doing a half wall um, or, or something of that nature. I haven't really decided yet. Maybe do a designer wallpaper here and then keep this wall open in white or a color. I don't know. I, I'm contemplating it, but it'll be last either way. We walk back here. This is, I uh, might as well take you, I, this would be the master bedroom of the two bedrooms. So again, the flooring, we need to knock all this out. My goal for the flooring, if it fits the budget, is to do a, a white French oak flooring, or at least that type of color. So that's a very, very light oak. Uh, that's what the goal is here. Inside of the master bedroom, we're gonna take these out. We're gonna replace these. We're gonna do a nice matte black uh, modern fan. And hopefully within that fan, we can find a little bit of color. The one that I had looked at inside of the you know, the actual uh, light bulb encasement had like a copper orange tone. So it's all black, but then a slight copper orange tone in the center, which would look cool. So very light flooring, all white, black fan. And in order to balance that out a little bit so that the room's not so boring, we're actually going to take the closet doors and we're going to have these as black doors. Now, for all of these doors here, we have to, you know, we have to refinish them. We have to gloss them up, do a high gloss white on them. We're going to take off all of these, these handles and we're going to replace every single one in, on every single door. So all hardware is being replaced and we're going to do a brushed matte black. So these little accent pieces of black should bounce off well um, off the modern light fixtures as well as doors that we'll be putting in here. So it won't be overwhelming. It will be nice, strong, bold accents. So we head over here. We have the bathroom, which was redone at some point. This is actually a very nice vanity. They went for a Venetian style in here. All of this is that um, there is a T word that I'm looking for. Uh, Tanzanite? I don't know, but it's a Venetian tile that they stick in here. This is all needs to be redone. So we're gonna clean all this up. We're gonna cap these off, keep these recessed lighting. They had removed their uh, light fixture, which sat above the mirror. So we will figure out something to do here. I'm gonna to try to find a light fixture that will not, a light fixture that will be modern and will match the style that we're doing out here, but it won't clash so badly with this bathroom. Um, again, we're not touching this bathroom because that can turn into a big project. So we're just going to um, try to touch up, make it pop a little bit, maybe change a small few things in here and, um, and, and just leave it as that. We might take the shower head actually. I was thinking about putting a rainfall shower head or at least something that, you know, one of the shower heads that comes out and it's a square box and it rain falls on top of you. So the water won't be coming out of there, but it will look, it will look good. So we might go ahead and do that. Coming over here, uh, well, this is just a pantry, pantry, a um, linen closet. 
uh, same type of deal here, right? Replace these, high gloss white, black, brushed matte black. Same thing here as we talked about in the other bedroom. Finished floors, bright white, new fan, and again, with the accent walls and the wallpaper, I am still thinking of what I might want to do. I might take that back wall and do a designer wallpaper on it uh, or one of these walls. I'm not sure yet. I have to see once, you know, once we're really at the tail end of the renovation, what we want to do. Inside of here, we're gonna rip out all this stuff from the old closets, clean this all up, bright white, then take the shelving, put it back in there, black doors, black handles. Um, let's see, what else do we have? All this wiring and whatnot, we're gonna rip all this out. There's wiring that goes all throughout this house. We're gonna rip it all out. Um, you know, when, the, when new owners come in here into their, you know, freshly uh, cleaned up unit and they have whatever cable company or internet service they want installed, those guys will reinstall it in a, uh, ho hopefully a more, you know, fashionable way rather than having all these wires just sit all over the house. So we're just gonna dig all those out. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? All these lighting fixtures, I'm gonna find a nice statement piece for this entryway. So as soon as you walk in through that door, so as soon as you walk in here, right? You're gonna look up and you're gonna see this this really nice statement piece that just hangs here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking a combination of a black and gold light fixture. So likely what I'll do is some type of um, gold fixture with multiple lights and then it will probably have like a black chrome encasement. So uh, we'll stick that right there. It will hang down slightly to not get in your view, but also so that you pay attention to it. And then this door, we're gonna do the black <clears throat> on this closet door as well. So when you walk in, you should get, you know, a, a real refreshing feeling when you come in. You sh it should, when you walk in, what I want someone to do is as soon as they walk, walk in, I want their mind to think, oh, this is going to be nice. And the only way to do that is to hit them with a few pops of modern as soon as they open the door. So we'll do this black, all this will be bright white. We'll have a nice luxury light fixture here. I might have some type of wallpaper design going right here. Hardwood flooring will be done. And as they look out into the distance, they will again, not only see this statement piece, but beyond that, they're gonna see another statement piece in there. So that's it, flip this thing back around. That's it, you now know what this place looked like beforehand, uh, before we get it ready, before we just change its identity completely and put it on the market for sale. So I've explained to you what I know so far, the goal of what I have in my mind. We'll see how it plays out. Again, we have to pay attention to the budget and once everything's complete, you'll be seeing me again here in, I guess, a few weeks in the future. Um, so let's see how it goes. So one of the biggest changes in this condo is going to be the painting because the paint is in rough shape. There's a lot of holes in the wall. There's a lot of cracks in the wall. There's a lot of, um, I mean, redoing a good paint job in this condo is going to be a massive change. Um, not a huge ticket item, but has a big impact. I'll show you where we're at right now. We've just got the painters in here. Um, we're starting the initial steps and getting all this cleaned up and I'll show you how it begins. So we're in the bedroom here and you can see all the remains of the um, scrapings that the painter has to chip off and sand out and even out. And then all of these are, you know, old holes and splinter cracks that are going through the walls and essentially he has to putty them and patch them and then smooth them out. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll be coming in and doing uh, primer and getting all this evened out before the, the first layer of paint goes on. So all this type of stuff. See, these are these were all big cracks, splinter cracks going down the walls just from time and age. And uh, we need to redo all of that. Same deal in here. You've also got cracks that were up on the ceiling. So we have to take care 
of stuff like that. Obviously these are being moved out. I already told you that in the last video, but that's the type of stuff that we're, we're working on right now. So these are the initial steps in redoing things. Um, if you're going to do a paint job, if, you're, if your house is older, if it does have some wear and tear in the walls, uh, you've got, you know, nail holes, old screws that need to be pulled out, splinter cracks going through the walls and ceiling. Um, my recommendation is that if you're going to do a paint job, do a good paint job. So make sure you go through the steps to make sure that the final product looks good. And these are those steps, patching, sanding out, primer, and then you're beginning your first coat of paint. Okay, today is the day. The unit is complete. Everything is finished. It was actually finished last week, but in the past week, you know, we have to work on listing prep and the marketing prep and whatnot. So I've been busy with that rather than filming this. Today is December 5th. So the first video I filmed was October 26th. So let's say it took about a month to do all this. In reality, the work that we actually did probably took two to two and a half weeks. It was not it was not hard to get done. The only thing that delayed us was, you know, everyone is having issues with supply chains and whatnot right now. So some of the fixtures, and some of the flooring and stuff like that that we were ordering to put into the condo was delayed. It took time, it was delayed by like a week and a half. So that's what pushed us back. But if you do decide to do stuff like this in your own place or some type of project that you have or you wanna do, you could, you could get it done in like two and a half weeks and it makes a huge difference. So I think how we're going to start this off is that I'm just going to play you the promo marketing video, which we're doing for the sale of this listing. You'll be able to see the whole thing in its, in its final product. And then after that promo video ends, I'll flip this around and we'll run through and talk about what we did. Enjoy. transformation you've seen it all so let's go ahead and flip this around and do the walkthrough talk about what we did all right here we are at the entry so like i said i wanted a statement and a focal piece uh hanging right there so we replaced that light fixture we found a really nice gold uh fixture here originally i had a lighting fixture picked out that was very similar to this one slightly smaller same shape slightly smaller and it had a black cage box around it um, but we didn't end up going with this one, that one. And this one just seemed to be a little bit more impressive. So that's what we went with. The walls, all of that, I talked about possibly doing wallpaper or something of that nature. But when all of this was complete and I looked at it at the end, I said, forget the wallpaper. When we stage the house, uh, we can, you know, obviously we can use this wall for an incredible piece anyway. So we did that. Let's go ahead and knock out the kitchen. Like I said, we didn't do much in here, but we did clean it up. So remember all of that? There was fly traps hanging from here. There was wallpaper hanging. The, the borders were hanging off. So we cleaned all of that up, um, did, the, did the bright white, had to redo some of the trimming here. We ripped out that light fixture. It really wasn't providing much light in this, um, in this kitchen. So we went ahead and did a track lighting with some strong um, LED lights in it and it's brightened up this kitchen completely. Didn't end up doing this or this. The reason why is I told you we were on a budget. If we ended up doing that, that was going to turn into a project. Um, painting over it, wasn't sure if that was going to look right and ripping the whole thing out would, you know, it, it all of this, both time and money. So uh, we didn't end up going with that. So just cleaned everything up and it's honestly a nice kitchen. It is a nice kitchen. So we ran with that. The flooring. The flooring is, if you're interested in this flooring, 
This is called uh, River Walk Oak. It is by Tranquility Ultra. That is the name of this company that makes this. It is a luxury vinyl plank. It is not real hardwood. This type of flooring within the industry, within the flooring industry, is making leaps and bounds. I mean, they keep making it better and better. It looks so good. This flooring, I found it was a six inch plank. So like, you see this, like these wider planks of flooring, they really do look luxurious. And pre in pr prior years, in previous years, getting that big thick plank was a sign of this costs a lot of money. But the honest truth is, is that this LVP flooring can be a half to a third of the cost of real hardwood flooring, and it looks fantastic. As long as you get the right specs, there are some LVP uh, floorings that are very much entry level, and they look a little bit cheaper. They still look good. They look okay, but it's probably something you would stick in a rental or something like that rather than your own home. This flooring is measured in a couple of different ways. Um, this one specifically is a five millimeter uh, that would measure the thickness of the flooring. And with this LVP, rather than your normal vinyl that everyone traditionally thinks of, that cheap, you know, laminate type that, that goes across, uh, this one actually has a slight bit of padding on the bottom of it. So uh, it, it feels good when you walk on it. It takes care of creaks and cracks in the flooring uh, once you install it. And it works out really well. Another way that they measure this is in something called mills. And that is not to be confused with uh, millimeters. Mills measures the durability of the flooring. So you may have flooring. I might as well walk around while I'm talking. You may have flooring, which is uh, 5 mil, 10 mil, 20 mil, up to 40 mil. Okay. This flooring that I picked out was 20 mil. And what that means is that it is highly durable. It is great for a lot of foot traffic. It's great for pets. You're not going to scratch this up easily. Um, it's going to withstand time. And when it is that thicker mil, okay, like that, that 20 to 40 mil, you actually get a bit of real like texture on the flooring. This is not like... This is not just an image of wood. It actually feels like wood. I know it's very hard to pick up on the camera, but it looks really, really good. So Riverwalk Oak, I didn't end up going with the, the super white washed out oak. We went with, a, it's very light, but it, it's warm. It, it feels more warm. And that was the goal of this property because we're in the, you know, we're in winter season now and I wanted to create a space that somebody would walk into and feel cozy. Next, that wall, man, that thing turned out fantastic. So originally I was talking about a dark olive green or maybe a forest green or something of that nature. Still stayed along those lines, but kept it lighter. So this wall color right here, I stumbled upon it. This is a 2022 color of the year uh, award winner by Sherwin Williams. It's called Evergreen Fog, and it is perfect against these gold fixtures that we ended up doing. It matches very well with the light oak, and it was the perfect accent against the rest of the bright white walls. It worked out extremely well. I talked about doing the shadow boxing. The shadow boxing, originally, we were going to do it like this, right? So you'd have three boxes going down. And we did have it like that. We had half the wall done. But when I stood here and I looked at it, the combination of the bookshelves and those shadow boxes and everything, it was starting to be too much and it was making the room feel tight. So what we did is we moved, we removed the horizontal pieces. We kept the lengthwise pieces and this ended up making the wall, the, uh, the wall feel much taller much grander, and I think it's a great look. So if you do not want to do your traditional shadow boxes in your own house or your own project, I would run with this. This lengthwise box, it's very easy to do, uh, would work out very well. If you look at this, any painter, any simple carpenter can do this. I have mentioned this in videos before. These are just two by fours. They're two by fours, they're put on the wall, and we just paint over the whole thing. 
and it ends up looking like this designer wall that was you know created uh, in some type of millwork but it's it's very simple to do light fixtures so statement pieces throughout the whole house this is what i ended up running with so a, a six a six piece um spherical light fixture with that gold uh, uh, bronze type look to it it was the i mean i didn't know i was going to find such a perfect piece uh, but i ended up finding it and it bouncing off the evergreen fog and the oak hardwoods it was uh it was just perfect so as we were picking out that that's the one i started with right and this all the other light fixtures in the house that we picked out they needed to be of the same family as this one this was our statement piece and we needed to find things that would match so got these here on the side you remember those old brass ones that were on here from 20 or 25 years ago so these look really really good i mean look at that that's an instagram photo right there it looks fantastic cleaned up everything with the the bright white talked about the bookshelves and everything i loved that already the way they created that the the old architecture interior architecture i don't know what you would call it but either way the molding everything how this was traditionally created is awesome i love it i love these these old creations that they had here on the fireplace and all of the woodwork and the molding so this did not need to be changed at all it just needed to be cleaned up and painted bright white Heading over here, the master bedroom. Boom. Black closets, as we did throughout the whole house, gives a nice little pop of color, bounces right off of the, uh, the, the brushed matte black, I shouldn't say brushed, just matte black modern uh, fan. The other one that I was looking at that I, I had spoke about with the kind of like the copper or red tone that was inside of it, it just went beyond the price point. Again, we had to be budget conscious as we were going through this, and these were perfect. These are very affordable fans, and they look great, and they have, um, um, what should I call it, multiple levels or, oh, settings. I should say settings. Multiple settings that you can adjust the light and the fan speed and everything with the remote that I have sitting over there. Um, these are found at Home Depot. You can get them at Home Depot. Everything, all of the lighting fixtures that I got, okay, are all from Home Depot. So you can easily find them. If they're not in stock at your local Home Depot, they can, uh, they can ship them to you from wherever they do have them in stock. Okay. Over here, bathroom. Again, I told you, we're not doing much with this. Uh, not in the budget. So we added a, a light fixture here. Um, the, the black matte black light fixture, a little bit of industrial touch, you know, something different, just add it in there. Uh, and in the bathroom, we just cleaned this up. I already told you this, this vanity looked good. It was ready. And we just did a little bit of light staging in here. Um, and then, oh yeah, this wall was a wreck. So put in the new recessed lighting, you know, painted the wall, um, cleaned all of that up and uh, replaced the, um, the vent cover. So all of the vent covers in the house have been replaced. They were quite old. So we tore all those out and just put new ones in. The secondary room, but the secondary room is large. It really is, prop, it's nearly almost the same size as the master. Very similar, okay? Same type of deal. Take the fans, switch them out. Did the black closet, okay? Didn't end up doing the, um, again, the, uh, the accent walls or the wallpaper in these rooms, number one. I really couldn't come to a conclusion of what I actually wanted to do uh, in terms of wallpaper design if I were to put it in here. And secondly, it might have been too much if I stuck that wallpaper in here. So didn't end up doing that. The handles, after we cleaned up the doors and painted them white, made them look new again. All of the handles in the house. It's this brushed, it's actually like a very, I guess it's black, but it, I mean, they were like a very dark brushed um, bronze. Cool though. Very cool. So in terms of what else do I need to show? Oh, I guess I can just flip this around and talk now. 
So the whole purpose of this video was to show you that you could completely transform your place on a budget. Um, these guys, you know, they didn't have a budget of a few hundred dollars, but they also didn't have a budget of 20,000 or $25,000. So we were able to keep this very affordable. I don't want to disclose exactly how much we, we did because this is obviously an active property for sale. And I don't, you know, I don't want to get into that, but I have told you what the company names of the flooring and where you can find the light fixtures and stuff. So you can look all this up online. It is very cost efficient for the level of, of transformation that happened in this, uh, in this unit. The whole painting, I mean, it's the painter that I always use, so he does treat me well. But if you were to hire someone and do the whole painting, this is a 950 square foot spot. He knocked it out for like 3,000 bucks. Um, and if you're to do it yourself, if you want to paint your house yourself, then you can do it much cheaper. The lighting fixtures on average, about a hundred bucks. Some of the nicer ones, yeah, they get up into like 140, 150, but on average between the small ones like that and those ones, I would say the average of the light fixtures is about a hundred dollars. The fans, those fans, if I can remember correctly, I think those fans were like 105 bucks. Those are a great deal. If you find those at your local Lowe's or Home Depot and you need a new fan, grab those because those are, those are awesome for 105 bucks. They really are. They look good too. The flooring, the flooring was, I think it was $2 and 70 cents a square foot for the, the actual materials for buying the flooring. Of course, you know, if you know how to install flooring yourself, more power to you. Uh, if you don't, then you find a, a contractor to, my arm is getting tired. You find a contractor to um, to install it. Usually you can find a contractor in, to install this type of flooring somewhere between $3 to $3.50 a square foot. So um, that's that. And what else am I missing? I don't know if there is anything else that I'm missing. Actually, what I do wanna mention is the stuff about the staging because obviously the staging pulls together this house uh, and the whole look that we were going th uh, for. So let me flip the thing back around again. You know, if you're gonna change the look of your spot and you're, gonna, you're going to remodel it anyways in some type of shape or form, you're probably going to wanna add some new pieces and maybe bring some new furniture on in depending on what you wanna spend. But when I, the stagers and I discussed all of this and what we were gonna do, they have plenty of furniture, they have a huge warehouse, we just need to find the right look. So what we did with the combination of these colors that we were using, the, the, um, the oak wood, the white floors, that specific evergreen fog, and the gold, we wanted to stay in that color palette. Again, we already have four colors in play here. So you don't wanna go way off and start incorporating a bunch of different colors. So what did we do? We stuck to whites and beiges and, and shades of green. And that was, that was really it. So running through here, the rugs, okay? These rugs are called raffia. You might have seen these around. I really like these rugs. Not only are, uh, does the raffia style come in rugs, it also comes in baskets. Uh, they make furniture pieces out of it. And many people think that it's like a, like a straw, right? Because it does look like a straw. Many people think that it's just a, a woven type of straw. But what raffia actually is, is it's a palm tree that uh, their native land is Africa, Madagascar, the Philippines. And they actually take these trees and weave them into furniture pieces and accent pieces. And they are very, very cool looking. When you have a spot that you're trying to make it you know, with some, some earthy tones and bring some nature into your place, this is a great way to do it. So in case you were wondering what they're called, Google it, Raffia Rugs. You can find your own and uh, put a couple in your house if it fits, if it matches, you know, what you have going on in your house. Obviously greenery, plants, right? We're trying to make this warm and cozy, winter and fall type vibes that somebody would feel comfortable in. So that's why we did that. Uh, and then the fixtures. So because we, I shouldn't say fixtures, the accent pieces. Because we had the lighting fixtures going throughout this house that were already gold and bronze, our accent pieces, we wanted to stay with the same scheme. So you can see that the staging stayed 
with that type of that type of scheme. And you'll just see. So what I'm trying to uh, exemplify to you or or uh, communicate to you is that find a color palette for your spot and stick to that color palette. Don't go way off. Stick to three, four colors and everything will come together really, really well. So I think that is, I don't think there's anything else to say. So now you know uh, what's, this is what's been going on in the background. Obviously, aside from making these videos, I have to do my job and my career. Uh, so I haven't posted a video in a while for YouTube or anything like that because I've been working on this. Um, you know, one time on YouTube, I was, I was, I do a lot of design videos and I try to give people tips and tricks to do stuff. And somebody commented, and I remember this comment and they were like, why do you keep just telling us? And obviously there's always like one negative person out there. It's fine. But they were like, why do you uh, just keep showing us photos and, and telling us, you know, how to do these things? Why don't you flip the camera around and show your own house? If I tried to do every single thing that I have mentioned in my videos in my own house, it would be a carnival. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense. There's too much stuff and everything would be clashing. So I'm glad that I was able to film this from beginning to end and show you that if you just use very simple tips and tricks um, for designing a spot that are budget friendly, you can really change the whole impression and look of a place. And I think we did just that with this condo. So there's that. I hope you enjoyed. If you do have questions about anything that was done in here specifically, I can give you the answers. Uh, if you want to personally message me or something like that, I'm happy to, to give the answers. Um, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed.